In Timor, a trip into town to sort out administrative problems quickly turns into an adventure. And that is exactly what is troubling the grandmother of this family. Beyond this emerald forest awaits a road which at one time made the lives of Timorese people easier. But now the tarmac has disappeared and a lack of maintenance has transformed the road into a disastrously dilapidated track. The grandmother of the Dos Santos family is even wondering whether she will survive the journey. It's this kind of errand which Jaime really could do without. With every journey, he becomes less sure of whether his old truck will be able to keep up. The Dos Santos family has now been enduring this trying ordeal for three hours. What's more, they have to hurry up as the administration office closes at 1 p.m. This lorry crawling along in the middle of the road isn't exactly helping the situation. If Jaime doesn't speed up, the Dos Santos family and their grandmother risk having gone through five hours of torture for nothing. On the Silk Road lies the old Portuguese colony of Timor, wedged between Bali and Australia. After 25 years of merciless war against the Indonesians, the island was cut in two. From above, Timor looks like the stuff of dreams, yet day-to-day -day life here is far from a dream. For everyone here, the way is paved with sacrifice and hardship. All routes lead to Dili, the capital, but at a price. For an average of one euro a day, the Timorese people fight to survive. Their fatalism and joie de vivre does the rest. And when that's not quite enough, they turn to their faith, left to them by the Portuguese. For the Dos Santos family, the journey is not yet complete. Their grandmother remains stoic and never complains. She has experienced much worse in her long life. For the children, on the other hand, the jolts and shakes of the lorry provide more amusement than a fairground ride. At the end of the five-hour obstacle course, they finally arrive in Suai, the administrative centre. They're right on time, only to realise they may have endured the journey all for nothing. Apparently, only one person would have needed to attend to sort out the problem with their papers.
But nobody stops smiling. Life here is so tough that the Timorese people learn to be philosophical from a very young age. And this young girl knows a thing or two about rain. Timor is often subjected to Mother Nature's wrath, including cyclones and tidal waves. During monsoon season, just like today, the country faces an onslaught of tropical storms. Agostino and Genova are resigned to taking this route despite the risks. They're farmers and so for them the rain is a blessing, but it also has a downside. They are hoping their journey will take less than five hours, but this is looking unlikely. They've left their village, Hato Builiko, and are driving to Dili, the capital. It's only 160 kilometers, but in Timor, when the rain plummets down, it's difficult to go faster than 10 kilometers an hour. In the cab, the tension is rising. Agostino's composure is fading away bit by bit. If they don't arrive this evening at the market in Dili, their load of cabbages will instantly be lost, despite all the risks that they've taken to get them there. After one hour of bumpy road, they hit their first obstacle. In the back of the truck are three boys, one girl and only one umbrella. But there's no chivalry to be seen. <laughs> Dili, the capital, is still around 100 kilometers away, but in Timor, under heavy rainfall, it can take as much as three times as long to cover the distance. 
After three hours of the deluge, the weather takes a turn and finally provides a bit of respite. Agostinho makes the most of the lull in the rain by driving down some side roads which lead to the surrounding farms. These roads are in an even worse state of repair and could put his truck out of action for several days. But he's committed to his mission. In the valley, he's one of the very few who own a truck. Without him, farmers would not be able to sell their vegetables in the capital. On every farm, his arrival is awaited with anticipation, as if he were the messiah. The next farm is an hour away by road, and the rain has made the path almost impassable. Agostino often wonders whether the risks he takes are worth it. This next farmer, for example, is known to be a formidable haggler. Every journey, she pushes her luck. Agostino and his men will have to make up for lost time if they want to reach Dili before nightfall. Their battle is far from over. Further down in the valley, the heavy rain of recent days has caused flooding. It's yet another test for the villagers. But for the older inhabitants on the island, these floods provide a way of expanding their land and adding to their food stocks, as this shepherd knows all too well. 
ba bol kareta tumba kareik bol hatte te ba dotor sira dotor sira ne sukutia kala ide ne ne sira sukeras la bat ne ne han sam tata te hau han sam kultura ne ne am guri manu ho fai ho os mbua malu ho be osam ba tautia ne ba mak ne sam mung dure ne ba hamulak fali e depois kalanem label morasliu sida ku halwana sene ne kalanem morasliu the crocodile king is neither a god nor a spirit he is called amindo this man claims to be able to communicate with the fearsome creatures awara talaba fatin ida na na pulu beara sira the villagers have entrusted amindo to keep the crocodiles at a safe distance but we can't take any unnecessary risks before Amindo demonstrates to us his methods, we must first participate in a ritual. Amindo's technique is simple. He shows the crocodiles that he's not scared and that he is the master of the land. But he has nothing to fear. According to him, the crocodiles are part of his family. A magnificent specimen is lurking close to him. Amindo enters the water fearlessly. On the opposite bank, the crocodile watches him closely. He approaches the beast without hesitation. As if by magic, the crocodile makes its exit, as if fearing Amindo, the Crocodile King. As long as Amindo rules over the land, the villagers are happy. In East Timor, an even more powerful god can be found on all buses. All over, portraits of Jesus are proof of the long Portuguese occupation over this country and its Catholic influence. The image of Christ is also present to reassure drivers and passengers. In Timor, surviving each journey is nothing short of a miracle. Adelino is the conductor of this bus which serves Dili, the capital. His mission? To fill up the bus by any means necessary. And when there aren't enough passengers, he makes a few exceptions. Until the bus is full, it drives around the city and its suburbs. After an hour, it still hasn't set off on its way. At $3 a ticket, many inhabitants of these poor areas cannot afford to take the bus. Often the roof and seats are occupied by a real hodgepodge of things.
The bus is finally full, but there remains one thing to be done. As the journey promises to be a long one, Adelino and his driver have a special concoction to help them overcome tiredness. On every market stall, a powder with seemingly miraculous properties is sold. Betel is a cocktail of palm leaf and lime, which vastly reduces fatigue. For those who abuse it, however, Betel leaves its mark. It is certain that too much battle causes you to lose touch with reality, especially when it comes to refueling. <laughs> Is it the battle which causes Adelino to forget the most basic safety regulations? Or is it really the case that people from Timor fear nothing since Christ is watching over them? The bus has barely set off when it gets stuck at the foot of the mountain. The recent tropical storm proved to be relentless. In two places, the heavy rain has caused landslides on the road, creating a giant traffic jam. Our little blue minibus somehow manages to squeeze through. To make matters worse, a truck has broken down in the middle of the road. Esther Key, its owner, is transferring its goods to another truck which has now arrived. <laughs> This time it's not just a simple breakdown. It looks more serious and it's not going to be easy to fix. Not discouraged in the slightest, Esther Key and his team decide to take apart the axle on the side of the road with nothing but a small toolbox. No mean feat. This is what remains of the axle. I don't know. 
Removing the axle is a delicate operation, to say the least. The truck can no longer rest on its back wheels. The men throw together a ramshackle system which stabilizes the truck, but not for very long. The wood used to stabilize the truck has given way. Everyone tries to keep the truck upright, which proves more dangerous than it does effective. <laughs> After hours of hard work, the axle is finally removed. A new axle now needs to be found, which isn't exactly easy in the middle of these mountains. The job falls to the rescue vehicle. It's out of the question to abandon the truck for the night. It will be vandalised within hours by nearby residents. A driver volunteers to keep watch whilst they wait for the replacement parts. It's going to be a long night. Living in Timor means survival at all costs, whether in the mountains or on the coast. Like on Atauro Island, which lies four hours by boat to the north of Dili. 100 square kilometers of volcanic soil on the Sunda Islands, a mass of rock the size of Paris. It's the same story all over the world. When it comes to going to school, many students drag their feet. But this group of school pupils has a good excuse. There is no public transport to take them to school. They walk 20 kilometers a day which takes four hours overall. On this particular day, they're all the more reluctant as their teacher has given them a task which has tired them out before they even reach school. On the walk to school, each pupil must carry a palm branch, but it's not for their science class or gardening. In fact, it has nothing to do with their education. The 500 pupils must rebuild the fence surrounding the school, which was destroyed by the most recent typhoon. But they must have their wits about them. The headmaster is far from being a soft touch. <laughs> The strictness is almost military, but for those falling behind in their academics, this chore allows them to improve their marks.
Clearly, this motivates the pupils. The aim is to finish the new fence by the end of the day. Given Timor's current situation, it's clear the state has priorities other than this forgotten school. Five hours later, the new fence is finally starting to take shape though it is highly likely the next typhoon will once again tear it apart. The majority of these pupils are the children of fishermen. When school finishes, they immerse themselves not in their homework, but in the sea, in order to help their parents. In order to do this, they need a piece of equipment which only Naor knows how to make. On this beach, it's the harpoon which helps feed the masses. Two hours later, he gives us a demonstration. All the fishermen on the beach use harpoons made by Naor, and this family is no exception. When in the hands of Mario, this weapon is one of formidable precision. Mario and his family are lucky. The sea floors of Atauro have not yet been emptied by overfishing. Mario doesn't have to go very far to sell his fish. Most of the time, it's the buyers who come to him. Sadly, the same cannot be said for Agostino, who hasn't moved. He still has 100 kilometers to go before he reaches the market in Dili. It's 8 p.m. and it's now been 14 hours since he set off with his load of cabbages and watercress, and there's still no let up. <laughs> The truck must take a detour.
Morale amongst the passengers is at an all-time low. I'm sending stress to one. Tambah my to valis. Dalam klaro na ay palang valis tara I'm sending stress to one. It's 9 p.m. and the road to Dili seems endless. In the cab, Jennifer is not losing sight of her goal, to sell her cabbages. <laughs> But a few kilometers down the road, they hit yet another obstacle. The truck is forced to stop. The detour turns out to be a dead end. They must retrace their steps, and it's already 10 p.m. The market closes in an hour. Around one o'clock in the morning, they finally arrive in Dili. It has taken Agostino 21 hours to cover 160 kilometers, but as they've arrived so late, it's very unlikely the market will still be open. Luckily for them, due to the rain, many other trucks have arrived very late. The wholesalers have been waiting patiently. In a corner of the market, dozens of customers are eagerly awaiting the arrival of Agostino's truck. Several minutes later, they storm the truck. Yi Kung tries to control the situation, but the crowd of customers is too dense. The watercress is passed from man to man in a feverish disorder. <laughs> All the watercress has been sold within 10 minutes. It's a record. The 
Ikun isn't exactly a shrewd haggler. He is quickly persuaded to the delight of the more cunning, ruthless buyers. When it's time to count up their takings, Geneva receives a nasty surprise. Jennifer is devastated. Just a hundred euros, while she was hoping for 180, which is almost three weeks worth of income. All that patience, all these problems, and all for so little. It's a bitter lesson to learn for these sellers who are slaves to the road. The next morning, glorious weather has returned to Timor. The sun has barely had time to dry out the roads when dozens of trucks descend upon Dili. It's Sunday. Some are transporting a certain animal which could earn them a lot of money. Cockerels. And they're not just ordinary cockerels. They're cockerels which have been trained like athletes. And like all good athletes, before facing its opponents, its coach tries to make sure it's relaxed. <laughs> But Leo and Ursulino aren't taking their cockerel to a beauty contest, despite its impressive appearance. Once it's been dried, the two men are civil servants. Their two-footed champion could double or even triple their salaries in just one afternoon. But to do that, the cockerel must fight. The fights take place in small, discreet arenas. The bets are always made in American dollars, showing the significance of the stakes. They are often dizzyingly high for such a poor country. Oh, 
By betting $30 from his own pocket, he's just won 180. His friend, however, is less fortunate. He can't find an opponent the same size as his cockerel. <laughs> the fight is over in 10 seconds. Both Uzzolino's cockerel and his dreams have been crushed. He's just wasted three weeks' worth of salary in one fell swoop. <laughs> From deadly roads to devastating rain to poverty, Timor Leste is holding out hope for brighter days to come. And they may well be just around the corner as some promising oil deposits have recently been discovered just off the coast of Dili. <laughs>